I wanted to spend a little time talking about the oil system and everything that I've done to uh, to really get this LS to, to fit well in the, this 944. So it's an LS2, a six liter. And, um, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that I've had to do over, you know, a few iterations to, to really solve some things. Um, one of the first days is I did go with solid engine mounts. I don't know if you can see that black uh, kind of pipe back there that's made out of um, roll bar tubing. You know, I might have a better view of it kind of from under here. So, well, maybe not. Um, maybe on this side. So anyways, I've got um, solid engine mounts on both sides, which actually really has been working out quite well. So there you can see it there, the, the painted black mount. So it mounts on the the factory uh, location on the, the cross member and then on to the, uh, the LS uh, mounting points there. And it's pretty much the same on the other side. And then what I've done is I've gone with a dry sump oil pan, which I modified one by a, a CSX racing, I think it was. So um, I had to kind of cut away the oil pan and build up a little notch, a little bridge up there. And that gives me room around the uh, the steering rack. Let's see if I got another better view of it. Uh, yeah, there you can kind of see the the modifications. I had to cut and weld a little a little step up to allow clearance room for the for the steering rack. And so that's working really well. So this is a pretty low profile oil pan. There's not much clearance between the the cross member and the bottom of the pan there. And I did have to kind of trim the uh, the cross member um, mounting t ears a little bit there again to cl to clearance it and you can see that around the, uh, the the pan there and the cross member now with the dry sump oil pan I am running an external oil pump so that's this uh, this thing here with the the geared belt to it and all the hoses coming to it I got probably a better view right here yeah there's that that oil pump. So the way the oil pump is, the, the front three stages or, or blocks are the, the scavenging, so the suction. So this hose here pulls from the front of the oil pan, and then these two hoses here uh, go above the, the cross member, and they pull from the, the back of the oil pan. And then the last stage, the thicker stage right here, that is pulling from the oil tank, which is in the cabin, and then its output it goes from here to the the filter to the cooler. Let's get shot of the old cooler up here, and then from then the cooler has a fan on it. And then from the cooler, it's going to the back of the block here. This is the the oil inlet to the engine. So that's the the oiling circuit. And I've been really happy with this dry sump system. It holds a lot of oil. It's great pressure, constant pressure. It's a, it's really been a good product. But yes, it does mean everything is pretty tight here. Again, these are those suction fittings for the oil pan. You've got the starter up there. You've got the headers um, going to your your exhaust pipes here. Um, the headers on each side. I do have coming down to, uh, to kind of a Y configuration. So these are three inch pipes uh, going to flex pipes, going to the Y and then a four inch outlet four inch out to a, a muffler, four inch muffler, and then all the way out. So that's been uh, been working pretty well too. It does make these flex joints the lowest part of the car, and you can see that they have been getting a little beaten up from going over curbs or a little bit of off-roading. And then you can see I have had to use a bunch of AN fittings on the back of the steering rack to keep the power steering. I didn't have room on the front of the steering rack for the uh, the factory lines that go back and forth, so I've had to use these AN lines to uh, to go to either side of the of the cylinder. So the power steering rack, it um, what you see uh, here, where all these fittings are, there's a, there's kind of like a, a rotary valve. So when you turn the the steering wheel, which turns the steering shaft. It moves that rotary valve, which then through either this line or this line 
will send hydraulic pressure through either this hose or this hose to a little cylinder, a little hydraulic cylinder that's in this part of the rack that can push, add assistance to push either left or right, right? So if you turn the steering wheel to the left and it's trying to move the rack this way, hydraulic pressure will build up on this side and help push the rack that way. So anyway, so what I'm using is I'm using the CTS-V power steering pump, which mounts up high. I'll show you that in a, in a minute, and I'm using an alternator that mounts down low here. So, and actually I just replaced this alternator and uh, just put on an underdrive pulley to, um, to just slow down its rotation since this car's usually in the high RPM range and uh, want to try to save the alternator as best as possible. All right, in the top of the engine bay, you've got a better look at the CTS-V power steering pump here. And uh, I've basically for the high pressure line, just um, connecting it to the high pressure of the, um, of the rack. And then the low pressure return actually goes to an, a little cooler to cool the power steering fluid. And then it goes back to the reservoir. So and that's kind of behind the, the intake pipe here. So it's getting um, engine air from from kind of this side of the nose right under that that cooler. So just up the, the pipe through the elbow and into the intake manifold. So you can kind of see here a little bit more of that belt routing. And then you can see how the oil pump is driven off of that that geared pulley on the front of the uh, of, of the, the harmonic damper there, the main crank. And then you know, because the radiator hoses, it's a little hard to see that, that oil pump, but you can see the drive gear for that oil pump down there. And then for the, the cooling, the water routing, uh, it's pretty simple. This is a, a dual pass radiator. So um, what that means is that both fittings are on the same side as the radiator. So the water path goes, you know, from the bottom up and then that way, or I don't know, it goes top down. Well, the hot rises. So yeah, so the, it's pulling the hot water out of the engine at the top. The water has to travel to the other side of the radiator down and then back across. So it's a double pass. The water's taking two passes through the radiator. And so that means that the, the two pipes are on the side. Now, because of the clearance, there's pretty tight clearance issues. And I wanted to minimize my rubber elbows just to minimize joints and leaks. I uh, welded elbows onto the radiator. So I've got the upper one here, and then the lower one is down there, which uh, then goes to the, the water pump. And just a little heater bypass hose on the water pump. And uh, that's about it. And here you can actually see a better view of the um, the oil lines. So this this um, big top one here is going to the, the oil pump or the oil tank in the cabin. And then it comes back here. So there's two lines that run uh, behind the fender liner um, through the wheel well up into the cabin through the firewall. And then when it comes back, it goes to the oil filter. And then here's a top view of that cooler and then back to the engine. Um, a few other simple things. The, uh, the fuel rail is uh, getting its fuel here, which uh, I have a piece of heat protective shielding over the fuel line just because it's going right over the headers. Uh, I actually did, you know, rotate the fuel rail and turn it around from the original application in the Corvette. Um, I also have EGT sensors on all, all eight cylinders. So that's this little, uh, this little braided wire and you can see the bungs on the headers there. So these headers are hot jet coated, ceramic coated to try to help keep a little bit of extra heat in to kind of manage the under hood temperatures and uh, yeah and so far real real happy with all of that.